Hi everyone, Matt here on day six, we're up to of the Greg's Garage 30 day challenge. And yesterday, day five, I put up a video for a weld repair I did some time back because I couldn't get out in the shop, but uh, it's Saturday today here in Australia at this point in time. It'll be Saturday no matter where you are on the 6th of August, but anyway, I haven't had enough sleep. So, uh, being the weekend, I can start using some noisy power tools uh, around the neighborhood. So I've just been thinking ahead about uh, trying to get this job done during the month of August for the challenge. So all the stuff like on the bench in terms of cleaning parts and reassembly, I can do that during the week at night after work because it's not, not too noisy. But if I'm going to be stripping parts and if I'm going to be painting using a compressor, then I really got to do that on the weekend. So some of this I've got to prep for the weekend and then do it on the weekend that I can keep working during the week. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to strip and clean and paint the bed today, being the Saturday, and then I can sit that on the bench. And then as I'm cleaning and painting parts, I can start to reassemble the lay on the bench. Now, I think I'm going to also attempt to um, build a new stand <coughs> as part of the challenge. There's nothing like making the challenge even harder than it needs to be. So I'll get the lathe set up on the bench, uh, rebuilt, and then I can build a new stand and then use the engine crane to pick the lathe up and put it onto the new stand. So today's job will be get the bed off, clean it up and get it painted so that I can sit on the bench and get started on the rest of the job. Okay, got the lathe bed on the bench on cardboard. I don't want to scratch the ways, so I just sat it on cardboard. Just something interesting here where I thought I might share. These four bolts at each end that hold the pedestal on, or the, the pedestals onto the bed itself, they're a really wacky bolt size. So this being probably a 60s lathe, and it's not a metric lathe, it's an imperial lathe, so I'm expecting imperial bolts. So it's those bolt heads are bigger than half inch and they're smaller than 9 16th. You know, I don't have a socket that suits anything in between. And they're bigger than 13 millimeters and smaller than 14. So it's a really wacky side. Now the heads say Ajax. Ajax was an Australian manufacturer of bolts. I think they're uh, probably just importing now. So I don't want to damage those bolts necessarily. I don't know what sort of thread they are. So I want to try and save them. So I've showed this these sockets on... Uh, my video on wrenches and these are uh, these are called Metrinch sockets and I think they're an American design I'm not sure where they come from these are impact versions so for use an impact gun but rather than driving off the points or the of the corners of the bolts they drive off the flanks so if I used a socket that was too big I'm potentially going to be rounding off the corner of the those bolt heads so if I use this socket here then I can drive off the sides or the flats on the bolt and that should uh, prevent me damaging those bolts more than I need to. So uh, let's get going with this. And remember, the tool you don't use is better than the tool you don't have. See, Metrin saves the day.
Okay, so I've cleaned the two pedestals, I've cleaned the bed, and you probably guessed from some of this stuff you might have seen that this lathe was originally that green color. And I'm going to repaint it probably in a gray just to match the rest of the shop. There's nothing green in here, it's all red and black and gray. So, uh, as you can see in here, it's red inside the bed. And I've got to work out an order of operations on how I'm going to do this. Uh, I think I'm going to rattle can the paint on. And there's a couple of reasons for that is, one, I don't have to start my compressor so I can do it during the week, even though it's cold at night, not ideal painting conditions. Um, I can do it any day of the week. So will I get the best result? Well, maybe not, but I'm going to use the best quality paint I can get in the rattle can, and I'll show you that once I've gone to get it. I was going to spray it, but I think because of the challenge, I think I'll just rattle can it so I can keep working during the week. So I'm going to have to rattle can it, so I'm probably going to have to mask off all the, the ways. So I'm thinking I'm going to brush paint this red in first. So that's not a critical finish, it's just covering the casting. So I'll brush or roller in the, the red. Um, so if it goes over the sides a bit, it's not going to matter. I'll clean it up and I can repaint it. Then I'll mask all that off and then spray the uh, final color. So I'm going to get this paint off. So I'll work out an order of operations and I think uh, I think we'll strip the paint off the outside first because that'll send paint chips flying everywhere. I don't really want to get it inside here once I've put a coat of paint on. So we'll strip, paint, and then mask up, and then paint the final colour here. So uh, let's get into it. Okay, I forgot to mention, I've, I've just used kerosene to clean all the oil off this, including off the ways. Now, I don't want to leave this outside well, in, in, uh, in the air without any protective coating on it. So I'm going to try and move relatively quickly. It's uh, 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. And my jet is going to be to get this thing painted this afternoon. It might run into tomorrow. It might at least get some primer on the outside. So I don't want to be mucking around for a week while all these surfaces are unprotected. So I'm going to move pretty quickly. Now, if I have to stop and leave it i'm just going to get some wd-40 on a rag and just wipe those surfaces so that they're protected in the meantime okay i'm going to start stripping the paint off the bed and i'll put it on a wooden table and that's because I don't want to scratch or damage the ways on the bed so I could have put on a steel bench and then put some plywood or something down but I've got this one and it means I can move all the way around it and you can see I paint on it anyway so it's just a bench for these sort of projects um, wire wheel on the angle grinder and it was as was pointed out by one of the commenters the other day um, this is probably 60s or 70s paint so it might have lead in it, so I am going to use a dust mask while I'm uh, grinding the paint off. Uh, I won't be grinding it really, it'll be just smashing it into thousands of little pieces and just distributing it all over this shed. Uh, other than that, let's get into it. Well that was fun, 
So that's taken me nearly an, nearly an hour. And you can see I've got the cream or grey paint off. I really like grey paint off. That came off as soon as I hit it with the wheel. And it was green underneath it. But then when you look at the casting where I've got back to bare metal, it is really rough. And I think they've maybe sprayed on or brushed on some sort of a filler or putty because um, you couldn't see all these marks in the casting when it was painted. So I decided not to take it all off because I'd end up having to fill it back in again when I repainted it. So I've got the grey off, I've got the green off and if there's still a bit of putty left I'm not going to lose any sleep. So I think what I'm going to do is do something similar and use a spray putty to try and fill some of these uh, gaps and holes and casting marks and things and we'll build it up with a bit of spray putty, maybe sand it and that should give it a really smooth finish so uh, looks like maybe it'll come out of the factory so uh, there you go that's the paint removal Okay, so I've taped up the ways just to keep the paint off them so I can keep moving. So that red paint, it's got a 16 hour drying time, so I can't recoat it till sometime tomorrow. And it is not exactly warm here in Melbourne, so it's going to take at least 16 hours. So I'm going to attempt to keep moving on. And the system I'm going to use is a primer surfacer on the metal, bare metal, or a metal and whatever that years I suppose is a bit of filler so surf promise surface to, to get the first coat going and then spray putty oh no I've got a couple of cans of this so I can build it up uh, it'll need another coat of promise surface to seal the putty and then we can start applying some paint and this is my favorite rattle can uh, paint and an epoxy gloss enamel from uh, a company called Waddle here in Australia you probably can't get it um, in other locations but you'll find something equivalent which is an epoxy uh, enamel um, this is expensive, but it's definitely the best uh, paint, rattle can paint I've come across. So for a surface that needs uh, quite a bit of um, protection, uh, like a motorcycle frame or motorcycle parts or machine parts like this, then this is my go-to paint. I've tried all sorts of different ones. I've tried heaps cheaper ones, and they're all rubbish. All right, let's get into it.